Scammers are stealing hundreds of millions of pounds every year. They bombard us with fraudulent texts, emails and calls. And what's more, their tactics are getting increasingly sinister. To keep across the latest scams, sign up to our free Scam Alert service to help you stay ahead of the latest scams and protect yourself. Go to witch.co.uk forward slash scam alert dash newsletter. That's witch.co.uk forward slash scam alert dash newsletter. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Harry Kind. I'm Grace Farrell. And this is Get Answers for living your best consumer life. When life gives you questions, which get answers. On Get Answers today, we are blowing away those January blues and trying to answer your questions about the gadgets that can make getting active that little bit easier. So, Grace, do you have a New Year's resolution? Do you know, my New Year's resolution is carving out time for things better because I'm just very busy and there's lots going on and I find that I need to carve time out for stuff. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done and everything just kind of gets blurred. I would also like to go to bed earlier and wake up earlier because I find that I'm just at my most productive first thing in the morning. Well, if only there were a gadget that could track some of those things. I know. Things. It's Very almost exciting. like I was thinking about what we're talking about <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be less sedentary, pretty similar, you know, just being that mindful about exercise. And I'm basically not alone. It's a very basic New Year's resolution. An analysis of Google search data reveals that searches for gym membership are a whopping 234% higher in January than any other month. So it's pretty predictable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd think it would like not always happen every single year, but it does. It is, yeah. And we are sadly predictable people, only wanting to get fit for one month. But we are embracing good intentions, all those for health and fitness. And we're going to see if the world of smart tech, so that's gadgets from the like of Fitbit, Apple Watch and others, can they really make a difference to our lives? To do that, I'm pleased to say that we're joined in the studio by two guests who can only be described as well fit. It is the brilliant fitness influencer and qualified personal trainer, Amy Lou Jones. Hello. And wearable tech expert from the Witch product testing team, it's Amy Axworthy. Hiya. Hello both and welcome to the show. Right, so many Amys, so little time. We've got Amy J and Amy A. Amy J being influencer, Amy A being witch person. Tell us about yourselves, uh, Amy J. I mean, this is a very basic question. How did you first get into health and fitness and become interested in it? Well, I first started working out probably about seven years ago, but that was just going to classes with friends. But then I suffered quite a bad problem with my spine and my physio basically said if I didn't want to be in pain for the rest of my life, I had to get my body very strong. So that's when it became a non-negotiable for me. And I guess I started blogging then. Very nice. And to this day, you blog on Instagram, you share your advice and inspiration for all your followers. I do indeed. Well, Amy A., can you give us a little bit of a definition of what we're talking about here? When we say fitness trackers, wearables, health tech, what do we mean, really? Yeah, so a wearable device is a smart device, basically, that can track different elements of your health and your fitness, as well as doing a lot of other smart and cool features as well. The differences between smartwatches and fitness trackers are becoming very blurred nowadays. Mm. But in general, a smartwatch is a bit more sophisticated and often pairs with like your smartphone a bit more seamlessly. They're often made by the same manufacturers. But equally, fitness trackers can still give you a lot of the benefits that you'll find in smartwatches. Am I right in thinking smartwatches are more typically like the big round face? that you can see your notifications on and then fitness trackers are more of the kind of the slim band. Yes, exactly. So a lot of smartwatches have been called, you know, a smartphone on your wrist. So they try to have a bit of a bigger screen so you can do a lot more on them. Whereas with the fitness tracker, you generally don't need all that real estate of the screen. So you can see everything a lot smaller. So that might suit people wanting something a bit more subtle Mm -hmm. in their day to day lives. And I suppose go back years and years, starting from things like pedometers or bike computers. I remember having one of those growing up and now all internet connected, tracking you all the time. Yeah, it feels like we've come a very long way from a pedometer um, being kind of the only tracking you can do. There's a whole plethora of features out there that you can utilise. Amy, you use a fair bit of tech these kind of fitness trackers and others when keeping fit. What gadgets do you have? I personally use a Fitbit. That's the one that I use and I've used for years and years. 
but also not just kind of dedicated smart tech. You use your computer, you use your phone and all sorts. How do you do that? I do indeed. I'm frequently teased for being the person who has the most apps on their phone than anyone probably in the world. Uh, That's because I have an app for pretty much everything. It's because I'd often find that there was something I wanted to do or try, but I didn't know how to go about it. Like when I'd only run for one minute and then I suddenly wanted to do a 10k, obviously it took a bit of time. (laughs) So I've got apps on my phone for things to do with running. I've got stretching ones. I've got ones to help me sleep. I've got meditation. I've got ones where I've got my training programs for my personal trainer. I also have an Excel spreadsheet of my 2024 goals because I wanted to make a vision board, but that's just not how my mind works. <laughs> wow, that is inspirational. It is, and, and a lot cheaper than a very fancy watch, I should think. When it comes to your actual fitness tracker, what features does it have and, and what do you actually use it for? The ones I personally use the most are the ones to track my important daily habits, so how well I've slept, my steps and my fitness for the week. And I just find that even though these things are quite embedded in my life now, say I'm working from home, I look at my watch and I'm absolutely horrified at how few steps I've done because all I've done is gone to the toilet or gone to eat snacks all day. And that's my prompt to get out and actually get my steps in. So it kind of keeps maintaining my behaviours. That's very useful. I mean, what are the limits when it comes to these? What features are there out there in smart devices? Yeah, so... Smart devices have come a very long way and there are lots of different health and fitness features that you can use. The most common that we see nowadays are heart rate monitoring. And some people might think, why do I need to know that? What's the importance of it? But it can sometimes be really important when you're exercising to make sure your heart rate doesn't get too high. Or even in your day to day, you know, if you're feeling quite stressed, you might be able to kind of think, oh, my heart rate's a bit high. Maybe there's something going on here that I haven't thought about. Yeah, well, Amy, that's a horrible segue to make, but you've got some experience of of heart rate and importance. I do indeed. So I suffered a stroke in 2022 and obviously I had lots of tests because I shouldn't have had a stroke. And one of the things that I found out was that one of the reasons you can have a stroke is a problem with your heart. And it was actually the breathing analysis, which is all related. My heart rate was always incredibly high. Like people have been saying to me for a long time, your heart rate shouldn't be this high. Like when I was running, as soon as I stepped one step in running, it would go up to like 140 and then it would even when people can walk past me when I'm running I'm that slow but yet my heart rate was still that high so in terms of the breathing analysis on my Fitbit it showed that I kept going into like too high an oxygen variation while I was asleep and obviously oxygen is related to breathing is related to heart so I had a feeling that the thing that would come back would be that I had a problem with my heart which the doctors confirmed. And how are you doing now? I'm good. Yeah, I had an uh, operation nearly a year on my heart and I'm doing well. Fantastic. That's very good to hear. Amy, what other features are there out there? Yeah, so you mentioned measuring the kind of oxygen levels in your blood. That's a lot more of a common one now. Sorry, how can a watch measure the oxygen levels inside your blood? Well, this is the thing. It's really important to know that these are not medical grade devices in the same way that you might use an actual separate device. But they can give you a guide as to they use different sensors on your skin. And that's the case for every measurement that is done. And they all do it slightly differently, which is another thing to know. And they all have different accuracy levels because of that. But it can act as a really good guide if you think, oh, maybe something's not quite right here. We always recommend go and see your doctor and not just rely on that data. But it can definitely be a good prompt to double check something. It's amazing to think, because I'm, I'm wearing a, um, a smartwatch now, that there are sensors in there that are kind of analysing my skin and taking all these readings. It blows my mind. It's exciting tech and it's all being trialled out. And I suppose we just have to take it with a pinch of salt. Yes, exactly. We test the accuracy of all of these devices and we compare it to medical devices where we can in our reviews. So you can get a really good impression of how accurate a device is. For example, over the last year, one of the worst devices that we tested was well over 20% out of where it should have been when testing a heart rate with someone running. And if you're trying to control your heart rate, maybe your doctor's recommended it doesn't go above a certain level. That, you know, is different enough that something could go wrong. Then the best we see are, you know, within 1%. I'm sure people listening will be thinking, well, which ones are the most accurate ones? (laughs) Yeah, so you have to subscribe to get all of our test results. But I can say 
the more expensive a device is, that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting the best device and the most accurate. We've got plenty of Best Buy smartwatches under £150. You don't have to go anywhere near 500 600 700 that some of these devices are on the market for. And fitness trackers are even cheaper. We've got Best Buys around the £100 mark and even cheaper ones in our great value range where you get a really good device for an even cheaper price. And in general... The more you pay for a wearable just means that it has more sports tracking. Maybe it can survive harsher conditions for people who want to do things like mountaineering or snow sports. For a lot of us, that's just not important. And you don't need to spend that extra money for the same level of device tracking. It's really good to know. Yeah, it's really useful because actually, if you're just using this for your day-to-day life, maybe a bit of jogging, you don't need to know your altitude, really. Yes, exactly, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What, what are the kind of craziest things that are out there at the moment with or, or, or some things that really you think, what is the use of this feature? Yeah. So a new one that we've seen is like the test of your swimming efficiency, which a lot of us might not, have, you know, have, have thought about might think, oh, maybe I want to know how fast I'm going or my heart rate whilst I'm in the water. But swimming efficiency, what is that? <laughs> Any kind of energy measurements are becoming more of a thing. So because a lot of trackers can track your stress levels and when you sleep, it will try and make estimates on when you have the most energy during the day. So that might tell you, oh, maybe now is the best time for me to do my work or go for a, a workout. But really interesting, but equally brand new kind of measurements that they use both sensing what your body is up to. It might use your body temperature, but also it's really dependent on information you put into the different apps and on the smartwatch as well. So it's definitely, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. The moment you put it on, it won't tell you, right, you're stressed now and now you're <laughs> yeah. now you're relaxed and now you should exercise and now you should sleep. But you can definitely, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out. Yeah, I don't need a watch telling me when I'm stressed. I, need <laughs> yeah. to be, you know. I mean, Amy, what of that do you think motivates you? Is it a load of data, a load of measuring? Is it a kind of a, a handy reminder? What do you think is the mentality of it all that can help you get fitter? I like the fact that my Fitbit has a little party and celebration and vibrates and puts off little streamers when I hit my goals. So things like that genuinely make me happy. So I think it's nice having a constant reminder on your wrist of what your goal is because a physical prompt can be really helpful. And those goals, they don't have to be, you know, getting onto Love Island, right? It's all about getting more active generally. We can all improve our fitness and and feel healthier. It must have been really useful for you in your rehabilitation. Completely. And if I'm completely honest, my fitness is nowhere near what it was prior to all of this. And a big goal this year for me is to get back to all the things that I love doing. But I think walking, people enormously underestimate how important walking is for a long time that was all I could really do I am a massive advocate of walking I think it's really underrated I would say it's my favorite form of exercise actually just going for a long brisk walk there's nothing better And I think that's the great thing about trackers. You have them on all day and they record all of your activity. It's not just thinking, oh, the only thing I've done today is gone for a run. It's like, no, you've been walking, you've gone to work, you've gone to see friends. All of that really matters and should be incorporated into how you see your health and wellness. On the subject then of watches, Grace, you've not actually used a smartwatch before. No. But... You have been our guinea pig for today's podcast. I have. Yes, Amy, thank you so much for loaning me this. It's a Huawei, very, very high tech, very big watch, I must say. And I've been wearing it for the last week. So it's the first time I've ever worn any kind of fitness tracker. And I was I was a little bit sceptical of them beforehand because you probably know in yourself when you're tired or you probably know when you need to sort of get up and move about. I, I felt that I had a good sense of that already. And I worried that seeing my sleep data might make me feel more tired than I was because I'm very much, it's mind over matter sometimes. I think if you have a bad night's sleep, and this is, you know, I say this as a, a mum of two children, sleep deprivation with a newborn. And I think if I'd been wearing it with newborn babies and then looking at the amount of sleep that I was getting, which was snatches, sometimes just minutes, you know, over the course of a night, I probably would have felt worse than I did just being like, just get up and you just need to get on with your day. But now, you know, I'm in a sort of slightly different stage of my life. I was a bit worried that seeing my sleep data would make me feel a bit stressed, but actually it wasn't the case. Fantastic. Well, before we get your final conclusions on this, Grace, let's have a listen to how you got on this week. 
Well, it's day one of wearing my fitness tracker. I'm a day late. I wanted to set it up on Tuesday so that I could wear it for a full week before we recorded this episode. But it took me so long to set up. That part was harder than I thought it would be. But I'm all set up now. I've got it on my wrist. It's a really kind of big, quite masculine looking watch that's quite heavy. And uh, I'm sure it can do all sorts of exciting things like track me going up and down mountains and things. But I I don't think it's going to be able to track much exciting stuff this week. Bit of walking, maybe a bit of yoga if I'm lucky. Annoyingly, I wasn't wearing it first thing this morning when I did the school run. And that's when I really get my steps in because it's 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back. It's really like my most active part of the day. It's Sunday evening. I have been wearing this watch for the entire weekend. I made a note not to take it off at all so I could really measure and track my data. I'm actually in bed and it's only 9pm. Being able to actually track my sleep on the app has just brought to life really how exhausted I am. (laughs) It's just funny when you actually see it there kind of in stats. And I've been up before six every day that I've worn it and I've, I've been averaging sort of six or seven hours sleep a night which is not enough for me. Just seeing the data has really made me conscious that I need to take care of myself. And that's why I'm I'm treating myself to an early night. I don't know if I would have done that, to be honest, if I I hadn't been tracking my sleep. I probably would have just ploughed through. So there's definitely benefits to it. Yeah, I'm quite used to wearing it now. I think I'm going to be quite sad when Tuesday rolls around and I have to give it back. Right, wake up, Grace. We're we're recording the podcast, (laughs) Grace. It sounded like actually you you got a fair bit out of that. How do you how do you feel about having to now give it back to Amy? I know. I feel like I have been converted. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten very used to it and I love the way it tells me to get up and move around. I am going to miss it, but you know, alas, it is time to give it back to you, Amy, so I'm taking it off right now. <laughs> It's funny listening to it back, actually, because I I say in in the early part of that clip, yeah, when I do the school run, that's when I'm really active. It's like 20 minutes there and 20 minutes back. After wearing that, I thought I was doing 10,000 steps a day. I'm not. That's 6,000 steps a day. So um, I am way below what I thought I was. So again, it's just another very useful thing that I'm going to take away from it. It's amazing to have that data and to just be reminded about what we're actually doing. Mm. We can get into these beliefs about ourselves, but <laughs> yeah. you're presented with the whole cold, hard facts there yeah. of what you're actually doing. What did you use on this? Because this has got a lot of features. It does. Yeah. So mostly the sleep tracking. I found the kind of deep sleep, REM sleep really interesting. Apparently, if you don't get enough REM sleep, it can affect your ability to discern people's facial expressions. Like, honestly, it's <laughs> Harry's like doing a really strange expression right now. Yeah, no, I, I got that one, I yeah. think. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so sleep, steps, also the notifications. So things when meetings are about to start, that kind of thing. The time. Let's not forget yeah. that you can just look at your watch for the time as well. So yeah, a couple of the features. Obviously, I could have gone way further if I'd had more time with it. Well, we will be back with you shortly on how we test those kind of watches that might be more for everybody, more general purpose, right after the break. Want all the benefits of a Witch subscription for half the price of an annual membership? Well, act fast because our current offer ends on the 31st of January. That means time is running out to purchase an annual full access subscription at the low price of just £49.50. That's a saving of 50% and works out at less than £1 per week. A Witch subscription gives you access to all our product reviews, from fitted kitchens and ovens to mattresses, cars and televisions. Witch buy all the products we review and test them rigorously in our lab so you know what to expect from your latest purchase. And remember, our in-depth reviews are always independent and impartial. The full access subscription also gives you access to the Witch app, use of the Ask Witch service where you can receive one-to-one personalised buying advice, as well as the Witch magazine delivered to your door every month. What's more, sign up now and you will also receive the 2024 Witch Car Guide. So whatever you have planned for 2024, whether it's a new car or some long-awaited home improvements, save now with a half-price, full-access annual subscription and make better buying decisions all year round. So, Amy, we've heard how Grace got on with her fitness tracker, and we've also heard how Amy J uses hers. So if you're looking to buy one of these, what features should you be looking for, and what are we actually testing here at Witch? 
So the first piece of advice I would say is think about what is most important to you and what you're going to use it for. We've talked a lot about all the kind of crazy fitness tracking abilities that a lot of these watches have. And you might be interested in in having some of those if you like to do extreme sports. But also think about things like how it will work in your day to day life. You need one with a good battery life, because if it just dies on you halfway through the day, then, you know, what is the point if you're trying to get an overall picture of your health? You want to think about how it's like to wear all the time. Do you want it to be quite discreet? So fit under a shirt and also the quality of the screen. You need to be able to see what's on it and be able to kind of read what you need like during the day that you want to get from your device. The other thing to bear in mind is do you want to have all of the kind of the data from your smartphone on your smartwatch? For some people that works perfectly for them you know the easier our lives are the more likely we are to use something so if you can connect it seamlessly to your phone and things like reminders jump over to your smartwatch you're going to be more likely to keep to your kind of health and fitness goals if it's on your wrist and reminding you all the time without you having to put in all that extra data but it's also important to note that not every device works with every smartphone For example, the new Apple Watches, you have to have an iPhone, unfortunately, for them to work. So it's always best to double check But do you need to have an iPhone or do you need to like be with someone? Say like, so my husband has an iPhone. Yeah. And so could he get me set up, but then I use it with my Android? You wouldn't be able to control it from your Android phone at all, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. The manufacturer's made that decision. But equally, like the Google Watches don't work with iPhones. So, you know, there's kind of give and take, but double check before you buy because there's a chance it might not work with your phone. Amy, thinking about that data and that constantly being available, do you ever worry that it's too much? Some people might not like constantly knowing exactly how far they've walked or how many calories they've burned. Definitely. And this is something I think about a lot in terms of fitness, that there can be some disordered thoughts around calories, etc. So I think if people have had a history where that's been difficult for them, I think it probably doesn't help. For me, that's I've never been a calorie tracker, etc. So seeing things like that doesn't bother me other than thinking, oh, gosh, like you were saying earlier, Grace, I've done well under what on average I probably should have done today. So again, I think people need to bear that in mind about whether it will support their fitness goals or it will take away from them. You don't want an unhealthy relationship with your wrist, really telling yeah. you what to do and yeah. making you feel bad. I mean, talking about unhealthy things on your wrist, you've looked at some really dodgy, you know, poor quality fitness bands as well in the past. Yes, we have. We have bought fitness trackers from online marketplaces, which don't usually have a brand or they might be kind of just ripping off the look of a a popular smartwatch or fitness tracker. But the problem is, is that when we get those in the lab and we test them, they have a whole host of problems. What kind of prices are you talking about with those? Oh, you know, anything from two pounds for. <laughs> and when you think a piece of technology for two pounds, what am I really getting here? But also it's not necessarily, oh, maybe it just won't work, but maybe my child who really wants one will love it. They actually do have some serious security problems we found. And when you're putting data into something, you need to make sure that that device is safe. So whilst you don't need to spend a fortune, if the price is ridiculously cheap, it probably is too good to be true. I guess if you're trying to get fit without spending a load of money, you can use a little bit of tech. You can use something as simple as a calendar or an Excel spreadsheet. What would you say 2024 would be your advice for people looking to get fit? I think small is a really important word here because you can have lots of things that you want to achieve. But I think if you try and change everything at once, you're less likely to change anything at all. So I would say pick your small goal, focus on that for a good month before adding other things. And the things that help me to embed those things are physical prompts, as I mentioned before. So seeing my Fitbit on my wrist, but also if it's a goal that is important to me, I'll make sure that that app is on my home screen. So I constantly see it and I'm like, oh, yes, no, I want to do that. And also lots of phones have reminders. So I set up reminders that ping throughout the day, reminding me to do things because it's really hard to do things on a daily basis until they become a part of your day to day routine. It's easy to forget. So quite old school things. And, and even you were saying post-it notes. Can oh, work. yeah. no, I Absolutely. So I do, again, my morning routine, which I've tried to embed this year. I have it written out on a piece of paper and stuck on my mirror in the morning, like drink water, <laughs> stretch. But until that becomes a habit, which I, I'm getting there already, it's helpful. Well, on the subject of tech helping you with your fitness goals, 
one of those texts will be social media. Amy, where can we find you? I'm mostly on Instagram at Mimi Lou J, but I am also on TikTok and Threads. Oh, <laughs> take that, Musk. That is fantastic. It's been so brilliant to have you both on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today and talking about fitness trackers. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Now, we'd love you to get involved. So can you send us your suggestions for other things we should cover? Whatever it is, we promise you will leave every episode feeling wiser about what you buy. We're on email at podcasts at which.co.uk and at which UK on socials. Another request from us is to leave a rating and a review wherever you're listening. That would be amazing. Doing that really helps us reach more people. Grace, what are we up to next time? Well, we'll be hitting the road and talking cars and everything you need to know if buying a new motor is on your to-do list this year. Whatever your questions are around buying a new car, we will do our absolute best to answer them. So send them our way. Remember, if you want more great stuff to listen to before then, check out the Witch Money pod for your personal finances. And we've got the very best stories from Witch magazine narrated for you over on Witch Shorts. Today's Get Answers was presented by me, Harry Kind, alongside Grace Farrell, produced and recorded by Rob Lilly-Jones and edited by Eric Breer. And thanks again to our wonderful guests, witch expert Amy Axworthy and the wonderful, brilliant Amy Lou Jones. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. You've probably heard of Witch Magazine, our home of hard-hitting journalism and informative stories delivered directly to our members. There's our travel, money and tech mags too. But did you know you can hear some of our best articles for free, available to listen to whenever you like? Each week on the Witch Shorts podcast, we bring you a specially selected story, lovingly voiced and produced especially for you, on a whole range of fascinating topics. Just search Witch Shorts wherever you're listening. Last minute escapes. In the sun? What is the best airline? Oh, the worst airline. What happens if my flight is delayed? Or cancelled? Would I be put on a new flight? Or would I be refunded? What if it takes me days to get home? Hmm, benefits of a UK staycation. When life gives you questions, get answers at which.co.uk.